fire on a ship. That is one of the biggest fears of any ship's crew. Now, cruise ships have a lot of rules and processes and things in place to help prevent a fire, but we as passengers also need to do our part. And one of the biggest things we can do is to look at the electronics that we are bringing on board. That's right. We've seen post after post and people are constantly asking, can I bring this? Can I bring that? And, and even more politely, well, why can't I bring this? Why can't I bring that? Well, as an electrical engineer, I'm going to tell you not just what you can and can't bring on board, but also the why behind it. So welcome to Living Phase 2. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Nancy, and we're empty nesters striving to live life to the fullest. Our goal is to give you the best hints, tips, and tricks so you can live your best phase two empty nest life. And today we're going to talk to you about electronics and the things that we can and cannot bring on a cruise ship and why. Well, as many of you have followed our channel know, in our previous life, before we opened our own current business, I was an electrical engineer, an aerospace engineer for over 30 years. I spent my entire career focused on safety, developing the safest, best products possible for the aviation industry. So as you can imagine, I take safety very seriously. Um, so as we mentioned, we've seen many posts about electronics, what people can bring, why can't I bring something and yet I can bring something else on a cruise ship. And we want to cover a little bit today about, well, why you can bring some things on a cruise ship, why you can't bring other things. We'll give you our best tips as to things you can bring on board because today, much more than ever before, we all have a ton of different electronic devices we're trying to bring on board. So we hope to help you out with that. So Mike, what things can't we bring on board? I mean, I'm betting I can't bring my leaf blower. Yeah, I know, in case you want to help them out and do a little work on the ship. No. Okay, actually, we've seen that question. Yes, we have. <laughs> we have it. I don't know why you bring your leaf, leaf blower, blower, but okay. So <laughs> the uh, most important thing is, Every cruise line is different. There's not really one international or national standard that says this is this is allowed, this is prohibited. First thing, foremost, we're going to link uh, in the back to a few cruise lines and to their prohibited items list. But before you go on your cruise line, get on the Google <laughs> and just type in prohibited items, name of your cruise line, like uh, Royal Caribbean prohibited items list, Carnival Cruise Line prohibited items list, Holland Cruise Line, and the one of the very first things that come up will be a link directly to that cruise line's prohibited item list. That's the best place to go, not Facebook, not even this video. Go to that uh, list and look at it. Wouldn't you say a general rule of thumb are items that have heating elements to them or items with a motor? So yes, Nancy, you're right. Anything that has a heating element, a motor in general is not allowed. So let's let's hit some specifics. Uh, almost no cruise line, cruise line allows you to bring your own personal coffee maker. Uh, most of the time there's coffee makers in the room. They're designed for the cruise lines. Um, so no, you can't bring your own coffee maker. Um, uh, clothes irons. So here's the iron. It's a travel iron from back in 1988 from our honeymoon on Song of America on Royal Caribbean. And it was allowed back then. It was allowed. We even yeah. had an ironing board in our room. Yeah. Uh, travel steamers. Uh, you see those confiscated constantly at the cruise ports. No, almost no cruise lines are going to allow uh, a travel steamer. Uh, hot plates. No, you can't <laughs> bring your hot plate and whip up your food in your, uh, in your room. Um, unfortunately, Heating pads. I mean, you're doing a lot of activities on ships and uh, plug-in heating pads are, are not allowed. Mm -hmm. um, also things like plug-in fans and a big one is um, surge protectors, mm. uh, which we're going to cover those in a little more detail later. But uh, yeah, surge protectors, anything with a surge protector is not allowed. Okay. So Mike, what about Curling irons, hair hair straighteners, blow dryers. Yeah, this is where it gets interesting because uh, I think here the cruise line is walking a fine line between a whole lot of angry people who want their <laughs> hair dryer and their hair straightener and uh, and protecting the ship. Um, some cruise lines do allow hair straighteners, uh, curling irons, etc. Um, some allow hair dryers, some don't. Uh, but in general, most do allow the hair straighteners and the hair curlers. Um, and it's uh, what we've seen, it's about 50 50 on hair dryers. Again, please check that prohibited items list specifically for your cruise. It'll be very detailed and it'll tell you what you can and can't bring. 
Now let's start getting into, well, why can't I bring this? I have them in my house. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're so dangerous, you know, why can't I uh, bring them on a cruise ship? Well, the biggest difference is if your uh, house catches fire, you know, God forbid if your house catches fire, um, you just walk out the front door and the fire department drives up your driveway, plugs into a hydrant and fights the fire. Trying to fight a fire on a cruise ship is a horrible and near impossible task. They train every day, very highly skilled people on those cruise ships for the event of fire. And so because there is a potential fire risk for anything that has a heating element in it, in it overheating, you know, catching something else on fire, the unit itself catching fire, they really are working hard to try to minimize that. And, and so I wanna keep it a little short and non-technical. We're not gonna get into all the super details um, about these, but we, I wanna give you some of the whys as to what goes into that. Um, I also would like to thank a, um, uh, Dr. Franco, I pulled some information from his website. Um, it's called electricalforensics.com. And he goes and does analyses on different fires and different instances that have happened from electronics. And you'll see some pictures from his website that uh, um, that I'm, and we will send a link over to you. So if you're interested in the actual detailed forensic side of this, you can take a look at Dr. Franco's website. Excellent, excellent work there. Well, Mike, what about surge protectors? Yeah, so here's our, uh, this is an example of a surge protector we have uh, from our home. Uh, you know, you would think, hey, you know, surge protectors are designed to to protect us, right? It's right there in the name. Right. Why can't, I would think that. It makes it safer, doesn't yes. it? Why can't I bring this on a cruise ship? Well, you can see from some of the diagrams that I'm putting up here, uh, <laughs> they do make it safer for your electronics but not for the surge protector in the house itself. Um, the reason being it's the way most surge protectors are designed. And the way they design that is there's a small device that's placed between the two lines and the electrical. You know, you have the two plugs. There's a device between those two that lets the overcurrent, lets the surge go from one side to the other without damaging your electronics. The problem with that is that that device, if it fa once it fails, and it will fail if there's a surge, now that device can actually cause a short, and we've all heard the term short, between the two sides of the electrical, that can cause overheating, sparking, fire, et cetera. So that's why surge protectors are not allowed, and most of the time will never probably be allowed on a cruise ship. So Mike, I understand about the surge protector, but why can't I bring my iron or steamer? It even says it's UL listed. Oh, well, it is. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about underwriters laboratories as we get to extension cords. Uh, but the biggest thing with items like this, anything that has a heating element, it's dependent on a controller, be it like the little knob that's 30 years old here on the side of this or an electronic controller. And if that controller fails, that item with a heating element, it's, it's designed to heat up can way overheat and can cause a fire. So they don't want to take any chances with things that have a heating element where the controller could fail like that. Okay, I understand. And just to close out on this topic, uh, to make sure we're not just making stuff up, because the last thing we want to do is, is scare anyone. That's not what no. this intended to do. It's really just to bring knowledge and so you understand what's behind what the cruise lines are doing. The Consumer Product Safety Commission in a latest report says there's about, um, 60 fires a year due to coffee makers and about 400 fires a year attributable to irons. Mm -hmm. So this is not something the cruise lines are just doing because they don't want you to be able to, you know, iron your shirt before you go to a nice they, dinner. They don't, to, to pay for professional steaming of no, your clothes. No, no, it is not just so you send it out to their laundry. This is a true concern. Again, it's rare when you think about it from a household perspective, but you think of the millions and millions of people going on cruise lines, they cannot take the chance and we don't want them to take the chance. Right. In fact, we're very happy that they have our safety in mind. Exactly. Well, friends, before we go on to the next topic, we'd like to invite you to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications here. Yes, thank you very much for watching. We really appreciate it. Well, Mike, what can we take on board then? What are some alternatives and how do we go about that? Well, we've already hit a few of them like hair straighteners and curling irons and things. So again, check that prohibited items list. The 
big one that most people are looking at is extra outlets, right? Okay. So we all need tons of outlets nowadays, and there are some good alternatives for that. Um, again, I'm gonna keep saying it, check that prohibited items list. But in most cases, a something like this, what you wanna look for if you're trying to buy something, and Amazon has an entire uh, category of these, they're called ship safe items. And so in this case, this is a um, European style plug, to a US style plug, and it even has two USBs at the bottom, most ships will have a US style plug and a European style plug, and this is a great way to add an extra US plug and a couple USB oh, so outlets. so I can take that European outlet and turn it into and a just US. plug now this I've got direct in an extra US, US outlet and a couple okay. USBs to go with it. No surge protector here. Now you notice what I wrote on here. 220 devices only. So this is very critical if you're gonna use one of those European style outlets that has the two small prongs here like this, is the device you plug in must be able to go up to 220 volts voltage. And you can read that on each of your chargers, devices, et cetera, because European voltage is higher than US voltage. Okay. So that's critical. And that's why I even made my own label and I put on here. So we remembered, don't plug something in that can't go to that higher voltage. That would be a fire hazard. Another thing you can do is you can have a small dongle like this. And again, no surge protector. It adds three outlets, three prong, heavy duty. And this would plug you know, directly into that other outlet. And this gives you three more outlets to go with it with no surge protector. Now, what about extension cords? I, I need one for you, my CPAP. Yep, yep, right here's your CPAP bag, you know? <laughs> and so we have to have one for that. Um, some cruise lines allow them and some don't. Carnival does allow extension cords. It's on their um, allowed items list. Royal Caribbean technically does not. Sometimes they're allowed and sometimes they're not. Um, again, no surge protector. But what's important is if you are gonna bring an extension cord on board, it should be a three prong, heavy duty, UL listed that in the US or CE in, in Europe um, listed uh, extension cord so that this is not some flimsy two pronged, you know, old grandma's cord you found in the basement. Get a good heavy duty extension cord with three prongs um, to minimize any type of fire danger. And I know in times past, we have specifically asked for an extension cord because they say it's prohibited and they will bring an extension cord into the room for us. Yes, Royal Caribbean does that. If you fill out the guest special needs form, and again, go to the Google and, <laughs> uh, and type in Royal Caribbean uh, special needs form. There's a form that will come up. You can check that you have a CPAP. They will actually put an extension cord and distilled water in your cabin for you for no charge. Um, so that's how they get around. Again, much like the hair dryers, they supply them. Royal Caribbean will uh, supply you with an extension cord if you do need one. So Mike, Tell us what's going to happen if we bring those banned items along. Well, a huge alarm goes off and the <laughs> FBI you know, comes down from black helicopters. And no, no. <laughs> so if a, if a port authority person has found that you have uh, brought a banned item, when you go through all the metal detectors, one, it will first, if you put it in your check luggage, you won't even know until you get to your room and you see that my mm -hmm. travel iron is no longer in my bag. Mm -hmm. um, if you're at the port and going through the metal detectors and going through that, that process um, and they find something like a, a travel iron or a steamer or something, the, they will confiscate it at the port. Um, and then they, when you finish your cruise, um, you will then walk out and right at the exit of the port will be what we call the table of shame. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you'll see a whole list of steamers and surge protectors and, you know, travel irons and co I've seen coffee makers, you know, all kinds of things on that table. And you can pick up your confiscated item then on that table when you go. Uh, what I want to try to express though is that even if you went on Amazon and you bought that thing that says ship safe and, you know, and, and, and it's like, oh, there's no surge protector and it's not an extension cord and, you know, um, and they want to confiscate it anyway, comply. Nothing is worth ruining your cruise because if you want to argue with the person at the port, it is not going to go well. You might simply point out to them, there's no surge protector. This was listed as ship safe. Um, would you please double check that I can't bring this on board? That's why it's good to have those things in your carry-on. Yes. If there's any questionable items, have them in your carry-on so you can explain right. to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, hey, this, this is what it says. However, there are times 
that they are still going to say, well, as far as I know, you can't have this and they're going to want to confiscate it. Don't get into an argument with them. Take a deep breath. Unpack that patience that you brought yes. along and, and just say, okay, I guess I won't have this extension cord or whatever. And when you get on board, explain to go to guest services and explain, or even just to your cabin steward and explain, explain that you had an extension cord for your CPAP or whatever, it was confiscated. Would you please bring me another one? Yeah. Um, it is not worth arguing at them at the port for this because they can go all the way up to it, including just denying you boarding and you'll lose your cruise. Yeah. So becoming belligerent, becoming angry, letting it bother you. This is vacation, right? Take a breath. And the fact that you bought this thing off Amazon and now they're not letting you bring it on board, that is their prerogative, and please understand that they truly do have all of our best interests exactly. at heart. Yeah. So we hope that this overview and explanation helps you all to understand what is and uh, is not banned on cruise ships, as well as the why behind it. We'll have links below to the things that we've listed here or that we've mentioned here, as well as a link uh, to Amazon of items that we've kind of curated that are travel items that we use, and as well as some ship safe items. <laughs> it's hard to say, isn't <laughs> say that it? Ship safe. Three yeah. times. Well, friends, as we wrap up today's video, let's take just a moment and play our little game that we've been doing lately called What's, What's on, on the, the Shelf? shelf? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, why don't you pick something today to talk about? Okay. Um, well, i tell you what. Let's pick this challenge coin. Oh, that's a good one. The Saluting with Smoke Barbecue competition, uh, which was there uh, to support Mission Zero Hundred Hours uh, charity. Uh, so as, as many of you know, or watched our other videos, in fact, we've had a whole video on it. Nancy and I are uh, competition barbecue judges. It's something we love to do. We travel around during the summers and, and go judge different barbecue competitions. And Saluting with Smoke, this competition, was actually our very first competition ever. But more than that, the Mission Zero Hundred Hours charity is very, very near and dear to our heart. Our daughter was in the Air Force for four years before moving on to her, her career. And she has actually lost two of her friends uh, to suicide related to PTSD after being in the military. Yes, and the mission of Mission Zero Hundred Hours is to prevent veteran suicide mm -hmm. by using barbecue as therapy. And it has been immensely successful. Um, they are just a wonderful, wonderful group of people where they put those teams together, where they put a veteran with a barbecue team, a professional barbecue uh -huh. team, that he helps them cook, they learn all about the process, and it is wonderful therapy. And uh, we just can't say enough about Mission Zero 100 Hours. Go look them up. We'll put a link in the description below. And that's what uh, that's what's on the shelf today is our challenge coin from Saluting with Smoke Barbecue Competition. Friends, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you being here. We hope you have a great living phase two day today. Bye-bye now.